going on, everybody? Let's get active. Y'all already know Obstacles are Opportunity, the only channel in the world where you can hot wire your mind to your balls and make stuff happen. All you have to do is have a vision and a mission. Let's go. We got more people in the audience. Shout out to everybody. Let's keep going. So what's going on, everybody? Go ahead and get started. We got four people in the audience, and I'm going to actually start running this in the back so you guys can see this. China cyberpunk-like futuristic cities are already here. Mega cities that are set to shake up the future architectural melting pot of western and eastern designs that appear both familiar and outworldly all at once now look at this Immerse in this futuristic megalopolis. This is not fiction. These are real cities in China. When I'm telling you guys that you need to get your investments global, when you need to take time to do the research and dedicate yourself to investing outside of North America, I am serious. If you look at this infrastructure, if you look at the economy, if you look at what lies before you, it is a lot. I know we're skipping a little bit, so I'm trying to bring this under control for a second. Let me just bring it in, hopefully. Hold up. I hope it's still playing. Hold on, just give me a second. All right, cool. We're still rolling. We're still rolling. So this is why I say it's essential to invest in Asia. This is why it's essential to be a global investor. This is why it's essential that you know what you need to know in order to make wise choices and decisions. Not only are great companies late east and beyond from TSMC when you could invest in Taiwan's semiconductor manufacturing industry, when you can invest in Alibaba, when you can invest in Baidu, that is the Chinese YouTube equivalent. There's so many opportunities for you to invest East. And I'm going to show you guys the actual PowerPoint and breakdown of wealth managers and people that you can get in contact with and companies and institutions that will assist American expats and Americans across the board to invest. If you look at the disputes, whether it's in Europe or North America, about what are we going to invest in as far as infrastructure, I'm going to show you true infrastructure that has already been laid out before you now let the eyes do the talking it is more than this video which i will show you shortly Now, it is more than this video that I will show you of why you should invest in Asia. And right now is the time. I do not have time to allow you to understand or go back and forth about relationships, going back and forth about the government in the United States, back and forth about civil unrest. But what I can show you is where the future lies and an opportunity for you to invest if you see the infrastructure, the key component to what Asia has been able to do is start from a blank the canvas. Concrete monster cities of China demand the world's attention with dramatic skylines, futuristic designs, and flashing billboards. 
Now, they have been able to utilize this blank canvas and paint down new infrastructure that is in sync with the technological revolution that is happening online. The cities are built for the technological revolution. Excuse me, this dang series is coming in. It is built for the technological or technology revolution, the cyber revolution, the fourth industrial revolution. America and Europe is still built for the industrial revolution. It is built over 100 to 150 years old from not only the infrastructure, but also the utilities and the energy generation. This city and these cities in Asia are built for the future with the technology and by the future. As you can see, this is the wave. This is where you want to invest. I get so many critics that say, why would you invest in Asia? Are, 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 are you scared about X, Y, and Z? Listen, stop the show. At this point in time, Asia is so heavily invested in the United States of America, not only through the debt that America has, not only through the debt and bonds that Europe has, but it is also infused with American corporations from IBM to Facebook to all of your technological companies inside of America get their material equipment and products manufactured in Asia, whether it be Taiwan, whether it be Singapore, whether it be South Korea, or whether it be China itself, it is heavily infused. And the manufacturing that is being done in Asia for semiconductors, for an example, is highly advanced. That is not something that you can close down easily and move to the next continent. See, the difference is, as I said before, on one of my Asian videos about investing in Asia, right? That Goldman and Sachs, JP Morgan is heavily invested in Asia, in China, in South Korea, in Singapore. They don't have a problem with the emerging Asia. They don't have a problem with investing in Asia. Because why? They see the growth. And I'm not going to only show you these cool videos so it can hit your cornea. I'm going to show you the data and the charts and simple infographics to hit the neurons. So you could couple it and ask yourself this one question, but one. Do we have the same being built anywhere else in the world? And the answer is no. So as much as people want to be scared, if Asia falls, so does Europe and so does America. There will be no IBM because everything is made in Asia. There will be no Apple because everything is made in Asia. There will be no of anything because it is made in Asia. Amazon is a dropship business. Dystopian cities of the future, these cities are in harmony with its society without the breakdown of values, individualist ideology, poverty, crime, conflict, and destruction. Before, before we hop into this, we're gonna go straight to the audience. Thank you for everybody for coming. Thank you, Riley, for coming. Greetings, family. Much respects to Richard in the building. Thank you for coming, my brother. What's up, bro? We're going to actually do this education and we're going to get our money and our wealth up. That is going to be the premise of this to expand your mind into a global investor. Good morning, sir. Let's get this money. Yes, sir. And just tell me how, Sway, how, Sway, how. We will show you shortly and actually inform with information. I think they have the first AI hotel. And that is right. And they also do have the first. I'm going to have to bring myself on the big screen. They actually do have the first digital form of currency from a nationalistic perspective. So that means their one is actually a form of a digital currency called the CBDC, China Bank Digital Currency. 
They have the first in the world. So while we're talking about Bitcoin, Euphranium, et cetera, being just as something to invest in as a vehicle for an investment, quote unquote, or appreciation to avoid inflation or whatever the reason is, this digital form of currency in Asia, China specifically, is actually implemented in society. And digital currency was established in China in 2004 prior to the 2019 or 2009 Bitcoin. So they have already utilized it and it accounts for more than a quarter of the actual transactions in Asia, in China specifically, and over three quarters of the transactions in e-commerce. So it's actually applicable. Utilizing digital currency to get a bike, utilizing digital currency to sit down in a medical booth and be diagnosed on the street and receive over-the-counter prescriptions, transactions for the grocery store, transactions for investing online, financial services are offered. The financial services, whether it's Alipay or WePay, can utilize your information to provide you with better financial services from loans, from customer loans, to loans from business loans, from loans from housing loans. Unlike in America, when we actually go to apply for a mortgage, we have to hand in certain types of information from our bank statements for two months, and then our pay stubs for two months, our W-2s, and then our tax returns. And then also we have to hand into all these small increment papers where they are able to utilize the data from your digital payment or your digital wallet to actually be able to calculate how to get you a better service product, right? Instead of only a credit score, they have a constant understanding and a profile of an individual's financial situation. And they could utilize that to make better calculated decisions when assisting you in investments and also other different financial services. This is amazing. One of the largest IPOs almost open called Ant Group in China, but they had to curtail it, delay it for some additional reviews and revisions. Let's go back to this video because I want to want y'all get I want to get y'all to see this and then we're going to go over into the next slide. Empires rise and empires fall out. Look at this. I want you to visualize this and understand it. This is not play play. This is the future. Now, as I showed you guys just now, the beautiful forefront, right? of what it looks like, I want you guys to also see that coupled with information. So let me go to the information first before we move back to a wonderful video, right? Because I don't want to just show you guys nice videos, right? So let's go over to this. Microsoft PowerPoint portfolio. Yep. Okay. All righty, we're bringing it up on the screen right now, as you can see. Now, this is one of the actual wealth management companies, and they ask on this PDF, why Asia ETFs? Why should you invest in Asia? So let's actually look at why, besides the reasons I just showed you. Asia is the fastest growing major economic region in the world and will remain so, period. Undisputable. Asia's GDP will take overtake, excuse me, the GDP of the rest of the world combined 
by 2020 or 2021. Let me read that again. Asia's GDP will overtake the GDP of the rest of the world. Bye-bye Europe, bye-bye North America, and bye-bye South America combined in 2020 or 2021. And my dad, they had the only productive year for the past year. So by 2030, the region is expected to contribute roughly 60% of the global growth. They are not only in Asia, 60% of the world's population, but also the growth. Asia will be home to 90%. Asia will be home to 90% of the 2.4 billion new members of the global middle class. I'm gonna let that sink in for a second. But this is the problem. Yet most investors have minimum exposure due to the makeup of global indexes, which are largely constructed by Western indexes. So 50% GDP, but only 20% of MSCI all country world. So the majority of indexes are not those of Asia. They are mostly of Western industries, Western nations, right? Western commerce and Western businesses. So they got 50% of the GDP, the global GDP, but only represent a sheer 20% of the indexes. So they're going to have to slowly build out their financial services, slowly build out their stocks and bonds market. They're slowly building out that over the time. And as you see, it is growing. Let's move to the next point. Here we go. Asia is transitioning from the world's factory to the world's innovators. Asian companies are increasingly winning at home versus global companies and are now expanding beyond their borders. Shout outs to Huawei. Shout outs to Alibaba. Shout outs to Badua. Shout outs to Tinchu. These companies are expanding their growth and development, expanding and innovation. Read Made in China 2025, and you would see an initiative and actually looking into the society, evidence of them growing exponentially in artificial intelligence, in robotics, in nanotechnology, bio, pharmaceuticals, energy, clean renewable energy. These are the quantum leaps, electrifying the grid, electrifying transportation, battery technology, etc. Even astronomy, space exploration. Let's move into the next bullet point. I'm going to bring this back up on a larger screen. I'm, I'm going to get to teach it. Like the video, please. Thank you. Like, share, subscribe. We got nine people, people who's going to watch the playback. Thank you for watching this. Please like, share, and subscribe. Share this valuable information. We got to dispel a lot of corny myths that we have, a lot of corny geopolitics that keep us behind from actually being able to invest and be actually being able to economically strengthen our position of our families and our future generations because we get caught in the political disputes and we think those are really valid to a large extent. But let's continue. Our Asia ETF portfolio seeks to invest in Asian markets, allowing investors to participate in this economic growth without requiring the larger balances needed to trade on Asian stock exchanges. Sometimes on Asian stock exchanges, like let's say the Xinjiang, right? You have to, or the Hong Kong Connect, you have to actually invest 400 shares. You can't buy just one. So if Alibaba, for example, you know, purchasing an A share in mainland China of Alibaba was like 26 US dollars, USD, but you can't just buy one, you have to buy 100. So that's almost like, you know, 2,500. So this is why they say that. Uh, the use of ETFs ensures diversification and keeps costs low. And that's what it does. So as you can see, the Asian ETF from Capital Company is this. And you can see the performance 
on the ETF, the Morningstar Asia Pacific equity. You can see the actual contributions between what country, where is it being allocated? Right here on country allocation, Japan, emerging in Asia, ASEAN, we're talking about Thailand, Cambodia, et cetera, develop Asia, talking about China, we're talking about South Korea, we're talking about Singapore, we're talking about Hong Kong, et cetera, even though it's part of China, but let's continue. And then Australia is there, a small contribution to Australia. And sector allocation, as you can see, technology, healthcare, customer discretionary, financials, communication service, industrials, customer staples, materials, utilities, energy, and real estate. As you can see, their holdings, an example of the ETF holdings that they have. As you can see, what exchanges these are on, Tokyo, Hong Kong, ASE, and then Six Swiss X. So these are not the New York Stock Exchange. These are gonna be in other exchanges across the world. Global investor is essential. This is why I'm screaming from the mountaintop, we gotta catch up. This is why I'm trying to show everyone the massive amounts of great work that's being done over there in Asia across the board, net, net. Now, you could decide to be a part of it or be left behind. And people on obstacles, the opportunity are not going to be left behind. Let me show you something that you guys will probably not believe it's true. And we're almost at the 30 marker point. Plus, I almost have to go to work. <laughs> so I want you guys to see this and understand that so you can see it and so you can believe it. Let's move to the PowerPoint. And just take time. Don't worry about your predisposed notions of what Asia is, what it represents, and China this and China that. Stop the show. Expand your mind and watch. You are about to enter a world of tomorrow today. If you want to discover the future, you must come to China. Today's accomplishments were yesterday's impossibilities. Welcome to the most expensive commercial development in the world. After a decade of construction, this $25 billion investment is the world's biggest flower-shaped man-made tourist island in the South China Sea. Ocean Flower Island is a truly extravagant wonderland made in China with no expense spared. Reputed as the Dubai of China, the Ocean Flower Island is located in the Bay Area in the Henan province. This man-made tourist destination is 1.5 times larger than the Dubai Palm Island, covering a total area of about 800 hectares or 2,000 acres. World-class development is composed of three offshore islands with reclamation area of about eight square kilometers. For local governments and developers, reclamation has become a quick and affordable way to create a blank slate of space in one of the world's fastest urbanizing nations. Reclaimed land in this area has proven to be more cost effective as plots of land in or near urban areas are at least 10 times more expensive. Investments of approximately $25 billion by the Evergrande Real Estate Group, the Ocean Flower Island has developed into a tourist resort island. Since its overall soft opening in 2020, it has drawn an endless stream of global tourists. This entertainment site will be the home to state-of-the-art marine museums, fantasy dramas customized by world-famous directors, five-star resort hotels, spas, duty-free shopping malls, theme parks centered on a fairy tale theme, marine interactive parks, snow mountain-themed water parks, light shows, food, tea, and bar streets, and of course, shopping. This is what I'm talking about. Ask yourself the question, when have you seen a large 
billion dollar investment in anywhere you live. I haven't seen the twenty five billion dollar investment. No disrespect. Right. And in, in, in no Detroit. I haven't seen it. I haven't seen it. Let me know if I have just not seen it, but it's there. I have not seen it. I have not seen the large investment in Detroit. I have not seen the large investment in our countries. And I'm not saying, oh, that should and Biden and Trump should do that. I'm not going there. I'm talking about what is so and where are we going to invest our money. Let's get to it. Infrastructure. Let's get serious. In the ports of China at night, things are starting to get interesting. Logistical routes are growing by the second around the world. Let's day go. by day, deal by deal, country by country. Are we about to witness a plan for world domination with trade rather than on the battlefield? This now let's look at this. Top exporting countries in the world. Look at China, look at the United States. And this is 2012. This is China's trillion dollar bet. There's an old Chinese proverb. It goes something like this. 2019, they over. Never put off what you can do today for tomorrow. Today, the United States is the world's premier superpower. But tomorrow, that will almost certainly change. That's because China has put down about $1.9 trillion of funding to create the largest trade network in world history. So today we're going to give you the largest trade network in world history. The largest trade network in world's history. Let's continue. The inside scoop on what the plan is, how it will be carried out, and why it is a threat America's I ain't got time for wars to do it. Da, 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 da. I ain't trying to hear that. As you can see, massive amounts of money being invested. The smart way. The only way. And I'll do another show showing you guys about the Belt and Road Initiative, about how big it is, how massive it is, right? The, the potential upsides for investors who are already going to be invested in Asia and Let's go. Amazing. My eyes have never seen anything like this before. Exactly, family. Never before. And what platforms can we invest in? in interactive brokers. You can go to wealth managers and look them up. GFM management is one of the wealth brokerage firms that I use. Also capital company. And also I would do videos showing this information because I want you guys to actually be on the forefront of this. Now, I'm going to show you the next part of this and we're going to end on this. And it's about to get serious. Modern cities. Where do you want to live? And these modern cities take out the political jargon in between and watch what lays before your eyes. The unbelievable modern wonders of China. Most breathtaking buildings, futuristic structures, shapes and designs, challenging architectural possibilities. After seeing some of these fascinating creations, you might think, what on earth is this? Is it even on earth? This is Planet China. China's architectural obsession extends beyond the skyscrapers as the country indulges in some of the world's greatest architectural achievements. Here are just some of these striking, jaw-dropping examples of new buildings across China. Let's have a look at some of these amazing hotels. Arguably one of the world's most unusual hotel. It's the first aquatic seven-star hotel in China. A cluster of sailing boats, part of a luxury artificial archipelago. The Western in Qingdao, ocean wave structure shaped by invisible thread. This is a world-class hotel complex. Its multi-billion RMB cost makes it one of the largest investment hotel projects. Let's move on to bewildering structures. The days of stripped-down, cookie-cutter stadiums, theaters, and opera houses are long gone. Making way for a new era of stadiums and sports centers are an iconic piece of sports architecture. Big size proportions, bold designs, architectural centerpieces of any city. These new designs are innovative and creative. Changsha Landmark is an international cultural and art center and theater. An organic fluid structure with a white tile pattern is hard to imagine to be functional. But it is. 
This landmark theater and opera house rises as though it was sculpted by the wind. It blends seamlessly within the environment. Who knew China has an offshore duty-free shopping paradise staggering $5 billion in sales? $24 billion investment of a man-made archipelago called Ocean Flower Island that took almost eight years to complete. And yes, it's in China, not on a distant planet. Architectural styles and scales are as diverse as the country itself. Breathtaking stadiums, opera houses, and museums constructed. These new developments add elegance and simplicity to the country's architectural portfolio. Beijing spent $480 million to create the world's largest steel structure and the most complex stadium ever constructed. China's Mars Camp. The base will boost the local tourism economy, educate the public about space exploration, and provide a multifunction outdoor experimental field for scientists around the world. This is the city of Guangzhou, rich history of over 2,200 years. How can it look like this? Entire cities in China seem straight from the future, not from the past. The innovation capital of China, Hangzhou, is one of China's most modern cities, and you can see why. Hangzhou is a technological hub, home to the e-commerce giant Alibaba. China is home to some truly innovative feats of engineering. From the world's largest planetarium to 5G sports stadiums, this is credit to China's modern examples of incredible artistry and engineering. China has seen the rise of a lot of spectacular architecture over the years with both architects and cities striving for attention. However, all created with a style unparalleled blend with its surroundings and a world-class design. The An Olympic Sports Center will host the National Games this year in 2021. With a total investment of over $1.12 billion, it is the first domestic sports center with full 5G network coverage. It also features six intelligent systems and 63 subsystems, which have been... I mean, this is a... Uh... Oh, man, don't want to hear that. This is amazing. So amazing. So amazing. Everybody fired up this evening. I'm exhausted, barely breathing. On on is leaving. No matter what, you can't take this from me. My range is as far as your eyes can see. It's amazing. I'm going to also, at later points, continue to show you guys these videos, continue to support the narrative support the realistic changes that are happening on the ground so you guys can see it bit by bit, video by video, and understand what lies before you and the opportunity for you to invest in Asia. The projects are amazing. The projects are here, and we can be global investors, and I can show you the path, open your mind, but you have to be prepared to be amazed so amazing that's the reason everybody fired up this evening i'm exhausted barely breathing <laughs> We will be global investors right here on Obstacle to Opportunity. You won't get this content anywhere else on YouTube because everybody's going back and forth with the bitter, bad, chatter, chatter. Everybody's telling you, don't do this, don't do that. Where the pockets are slim. They're telling you, don't invest. They're telling you, be afraid. They're telling you, this ain't a smart move. I'm scared. Well, if you're scared, then go to church. But we out here putting in serious work trying to make our money worth something, trying to invest in the best, in the best of the best lives in Asia. Europe has had its time and it's over. It's time for the Asian takeover. So you make a decision now. Are you going to be caught back and forth, back and forth, or are you going to be advanced full court press already invested in the best? As you can see from what I'm showing you, the best is there. The end result is here. 
you could see the difference, you could see the competition, and you could see the inhibition and in what it has resulted in. Don't tell me about the president. Show me the evidence. And this is the future. Make a decision. Much love to everybody for supporting the channel. Like, share, and subscribe. And take time to read. Take time to open your mind. I've been living overseas for 16 years. An expert. An expat globalist. An expat expert. I've been taking my time to dedicate myself and my energy and my attention into what is the future. Where to invest in. I've lived everywhere. I lived in Asia. I lived in Africa. I lived in North America. I lived in South America. I lived in Australia. I lived on all continents besides Antarctica, right? I lived everywhere. And I know experience. So are you missing out big time? And the answer is yes. Most of you guys didn't even know this was possible. Most of you guys have never seen infrastructure like this. Most of you guys have never seen cities like this. You're amazed by the small little advancements and development projects happening in North America, but you have never seen and witnessed something quite like this. So this is why I will dedicate this playlist of unraveling traveling to unravel the travel, unravel the opportunities, the endless possibilities, the opportunities. Move yourself from obstacles and place yourself in the opportunities. You can make a decision right now. It's only you and how are you going to do it? I hope you guys enjoyed the channel. I'm going to be giving you more investments. I'm going to be showing you more of Asia. I'm going to be showing you more of Asia, not only China, but Taiwan, not only Taiwan, but South Korea, not only South Korea, but Hong Kong. You know, that's a debatable, but not only that, <laughs> emerging Asia, Thailand, not only that, Cambodia, not only that, India, the advancements are happening and Asia is moving forward. Shout out and much love to the ADB, AIIB, Asian Development Bank, Asian Infrastructure Improvement Development Bank. This is the future. Please make wise investments and don't let anybody affect your portfolio. Obstacles to opportunity. We all we got. We are all we got at the end of the day. Thank you for coming, family. Thanks. Richard Ramsey, Mind Blowing Show. Thank you, Audrey. Hey, Obstacles, the Opportunity, great show. Thank you for watching. Thank you for at least watching and allowing yourself to see it because most people would have been talking like, oh no, some political stuff. So thanks for just watching the show and supporting. Thanks, Riley. She, I mean, family's always coming in and supporting. I appreciate it. Thank you, everybody. Much love and much respect. Invest in your future because we all, we got.